back to your book and the ideas. <laughs> we didn't even get to the first step. Uh, generating ideas. So you had no book and you're filling it up. How do you know when an idea is a good one? Like what, you, you have this just flood of ideas. How do you pick the one that you actually try to build? Man, mostly you don't know. Like mostly I choose the ones that are most viable for me to build. Like I cannot build a space company now, right? It would be quite challenging. But I can build Did something. Did you actually write down like space company? No, I, th I think asteroid mining would be very cool. Because like you, you go to an asteroid, you take some stuff from there, you bring it back, you sell it. You know, it's, but then you need to do, and you can hire someone to launch the thing. Mm -hmm. So all you need is like the robot that goes to the asteroid, you know, and the robotics is interesting. Mm -hmm. Like I want to also learn robotics. So maybe that could be. I think both the asteroid mining and the robotics. Is yeah, together. Uh, I feel like. <laughs> no, exactly. This is it. This it is the. Says we do this not because it's easy, but because we thought it would be easy. Exactly. That's me, with, that's me with asteroid mining. Exactly. Yeah. That's why uh, I should do this. It's, it's not nomadlist.com. No, it's not. <laughs> it's it's asteroid mining. <laughs> you have to like build stuff. You have to, like, gravity is really hard to overcome. Yeah. But it seems, man, I sound like an idiot probably now, but it sounds quite approachable, like relatively approachable. You don't have to build the rockets. You, but, oh, you use something like SpaceX yeah, to get out to SpaceX space. you hire SpaceX to send your, your, you know, this dog robot or whatever. So is there actually exist a notebook where you wrote down asteroid mining? No, I used, back then I used Trello. Trello. Yeah. But now I don't really... I use Telegram. I write it on like saved messages and I have like idea I write you it down. You type right. to yourself on Telegram. You know, like, because you use WhatsApp, right? I think. Mm -hmm. So you have like message to yourself mm -hmm. thing also. Yeah. So, you, so you're like talking a notepad. to yourself on Telegram. Yeah. You use like a notepad to not forget stuff. And then I pin it, you know. I love how like you're not using <laughs> super complicated systems or whatever. You know, people use Obsidian now. There's a lot of these, um, yeah. a notion where you have systems for note taking. You're not, you're notepad. You're notepad.exe guy. If you're yeah. a Windows user. Man, I saw some YouTubers doing this like, there's a lot of these productivity gurus also and they do this whole like iPad with a pencil. And then I also had an iPad and I also got the pencil and I got this app where you can like draw on paper, like um, draw like a calendar, you know, like yeah. like people, students use this and you can do coloring and stuff. And I'm like, dude, I did this for a week and then I'm like, what am I doing in my life? Like I could just write it as a message to myself and it's good enough, you know? Speaking of ideas, you shared a tweet explaining why the first idea sometimes might be a brilliant idea. The reason for this, you think, is the first idea submerges from your subconscious and was actually boiling in your brain for weeks, months, sometimes years in the background. The eight hours of thinking can never compete with a perpetual subconscious background job. So this is the idea that if you think about an idea for eight hours versus like the first idea that pops into your mind. Yeah. And sometimes there is subconscious like stuff that you've been thinking about for many years. That's really yeah, I mean, interesting. Like, it emerges. I wrote it wrong because I don't know. I'm not native English, but it emerges from your subconscious, right? It comes from the, it's like a water is your subconscious. And it's in here, it's boiling. And then when it's ready, it's like, ding. It's like a microwave. It comes out. And there you have your idea. You think you have ideas like that? Yeah, all the time. 100%. It's so just stuff that's been like there. Yes. Yeah. And I also, it comes up and I, bring it, I send it back, you know, like <laughs> send it back to the kitchen like, ready, to boil yeah. more. Yeah. And it's like a soup that of ideas that's cooking. It's hundred percent. This is how my brain works. And I think most people. But it's also about the the timing. Sometimes you have to send it back, not just because you're not ready, but the world is not ready. Yeah. So many times like startup founders are too early with their idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. hundred percent. Robotics is an interesting one for that because like there's been a lot of robotics companies that failed. Yeah, because it's been very difficult to build a robotics company, make money because there's the manufacturing, like the cost of everything. The intelligence of the robot is enough, is not sufficient to create a compelling enough product from which to make money. So all so yeah, there's this long line of robotics companies that've tried, they had big dreams and they failed. Yeah, like Boston Dynamics. I still don't know what they're doing, but they always upload YouTube videos and it's amazing. But I feel like a lot of these companies don't have a. It's like a solution looking for a problem for now. You know, mm -hmm. military obviously is uses but like am, do i do i need like a ro robotic dog now for my house i don't know like it's fun but it doesn't really solve anything yet i feel the same kind of with vr like it's really cool like apple vision pro is very cool it doesn't really solve something for me yet and that's kind of the the tech looking for a solution right but one day will when the personal computer when the mac came along there's a big switch that happened, it somehow captivated everybody's imagination. You could, like the, the application, the killer apps became apparent. You can type in a computer. But did they became apparent like immediately? Back then they also had like this thing where like, 
we don't need these computers. Uh, they're like a hype, and mm-hmm. um, and it also went like in kind of like you know waves. Yeah. yeah, but the hype is the thing that allowed the thing to proliferate sufficiently to where people's minds would start opening up to it a little bit. Yeah. The possibility of it. Right now, for example, for, with the robotics, there's very few robots in the homes of people. Exactly. Yeah. The the robots that are there are Roombas, so the vacuum cleaners, or they're Amazon Alexa. Yeah, or dishwasher. I mean, it's essentially a robot. Yes, but the the intelligence is very limited, I guess, is one way we can summarize all of them. Except Alexa, which is pretty intelligent, but uh, is is limited with the kind of ways it interacts with you. It's, you know, that's just one example. Yeah. I sometimes think about that as like, if some people in this world were kind of born in the whole existence, is like, they were meant to build the thing. Yeah, you know, like I sometimes wonder, like what my what I was meant to do. Do you have these plans for your life? You have these dreams. I think uh, you're meant to build robots. Okay, me personally, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, that that that's a sense I've uh, I've had, but it could be other things. It could hilariously enough be the thing I was meant to be is, is to talk to people. Yeah, which is weird because I no, always was anxious about talking to people. It's like a really. Yeah, I'm scared of this. I'm scared. Is, yeah, exactly. I'm scared I'm, of you. So. <laughs> it's just anxiety throughout social interaction in general. I'm an introvert that hides from the world. So yeah, it's really strange. Yeah, but that's that's also kind of life. Like life brings you to, it's very hard to um, super intently kind of choose what you're going to do with your life. It, it, it's more like surfing. You're surfing the waves. You go in the, in the ocean. You see where you end up, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and there's universe has a kind of sense of humor. Yeah. I guess you have to just, yeah, allow yourself to be carried away by the waves. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Have you felt that way in your life? Yeah, all the time. Like, yeah. That's like, I think that's the best way to live your life. So allow whatever to happen. Like, do you know what you're doing in the next few years? Is it possible that it'll be completely, like, changed? Possibly. I, th- I think relationships, like, you want to hold relationships, right? You want to hold sure. your girlfriend, you want to become wife and all this stuff. But... uh you should, I think you should stay open to where, like, like for example, where you want to live. Like, I don't know. We don't know where we want to live, for example. Um, that's something that will figure itself out. It will crystallize where, you know, you will get you will get sent by the waves to somewhere where you want to live, for example. What you're going to do. I think that's a really good way to live your life. It's I, I think most stress comes from trying to control, like, hold things. Like, um, it's kind of Buddhist, you know? You need to, like, l- lose control, let it lose, and then things will happen. Like, when you do mushrooms, when you do drugs, like uh, psychedelic drugs, the people that start, that are, like, control freaks get bad trips, right? Because you need to let go. Like, I'm pretty control freak, actually. And um, when I did mushrooms when I was 17, I, I, it was very good, and then at the end it wasn't so good because I tried to control. It was like, ah, now it's going too much, you know? Now I need to, let's stop. Bro, you can't stop it. You need to go through with it, you know? And... So I think it's a good metaphor for life. I think that's, you know, a very tranquil way to lead your life. Yeah, actually, when, when I um, took ayahuasca, that lesson is deeply within me already that you can't control anything. Yes. I think I probably learned that the most in jiu-jitsu. So just let go and relax. Yeah. And that's why I had just an incredible experience. There's like literally no negative aspect of my ayahuasca experience or any psychedelics I've ever had. Some of that could be with my biology, my genetics, whatever, but some of it was just not trying to control. Yeah. Just surf the way. For sure. I think most stress in life comes from trying to control. 